everyone. My name is Roxana, and for the past six weeks, I've had the pleasure of working with faculty on a project around removing sensitive information from data. As we all know, we live in a hyper-connected society where the exchange of information is growing faster than ever before. Social media brings many benefits, such as allowing us to share our ideas or thoughts. However, social media can also facilitate the spread of online harmful content. Online harms, such as hate speech or disinformation, often target vulnerable individuals and threaten the security of our society. In order to address this issue, the Online Safety Data Initiative is a program led by the Department for Digital, Culture, Media and Sport that aims to support companies to develop AI technology that can identify and remove harmful content online. However, in order to build AI that can perform effectively and safely in the real world, we always need access to real-world data. And with this, we may also gain access to personal information, such as names, addresses, or passwords of different individuals. And it is clear that releasing this information may put people in very unsafe situations. So in our quest to develop AI that can remove harmful content and has protect individuals, we don't want to endanger them back by releasing sensitive data. Therefore, data should be safeguarded through different techniques, such as anonymization. And this is the primary objective of my project. At the same time, this project also explores the trade-off between the risk of releasing sensitive information and the predictive power of algorithms for classification of this data. For example, we want to still be able to classify an article into child grooming or cyber grooming even after we have removed sensitive data from it. This also shows that some information should not be anonymized. Now, before we can anonymize sensitive content, we first need to identify where this is located in text. And there are various methods that achieve this. The first is a rule-based approach, which although established, it's a very manual and time-intensive process. For example, in this sentence here, it is clear for a human what this refers to. However, an algorithm would struggle and we would need very complex rules to encapsulate all our knowledge and common sense. On the other hand, natural language processing offers improvements over traditional rule-based methods. By learning from large amounts of data, NLP models can capture the language context, and hence they eliminate the need for hard-coded rules. In our project, we used an NLP transformer model, which was able to identify 75% of personal information. This model is trained to output a list of words and their corresponding labels, which fall in different categories, such as person, location, or organization. In the example here, the model was able to output two different entities and their corresponding labels. We then took this model and fine-tuned it by training it on additional data sets that are more relevant to our use case. We also adjusted the prediction thresholds in order to increase the report which is the ability of the model to identify sensitive content. And finally, we included an ensemble of models in order to maximize accuracy. These models vote on the prediction, and the final output will be the one chosen by the majority. In the example here, person is the label associated to the word as chosen by two of the four models. So now we'll see how our model performs. Compared to the baseline, which was able to correctly estimate 75% of sensitive content, our improved model correctly identifies 90% of personal information. And that is a crucial improvement of 15%. At the same time, our results show that most context and useful information is still preserved in the data even after removing the sensitive content. This means that the predictive power of algorithms for classification of this data will not be affected. Finally, this project offers huge potential. By supporting better access to sensitive data, it will drive innovation in the safety tech sector. This in turn will allow us to develop technology that will make the internet a safer place for everyone and protect vulnerable individuals against harmful content online. Thank you very much for listening.